My father got up and he was like, what did you say? And I was like, that's my boyfriend. And I kid you not, he punched me all the way down the hallway. I literally wanted to end it all. I actually wrote a suicide note. There were times where I would put my hands around my throat. I would cry myself to sleep. I didn't want to live. I didn't. This is probably going to be the most juiciest story time y'all probably will ever see on my YouTube channel. I want to give a special shout out to That Sounds Gay who sent me this shirt. True to you. Um, you can go to their website, the link is in description, and make sure to order your own. Hey Zaysters, it's Xavier and I'm back again with yet another YouTube video. If you are not a part of the Zavi family, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and share this video to all of your friends and family in order for you to be part of the Zavi fam. This is Xavier doing Zavi things for the Zavi family and you guys already know what I'm about to say, unless you're new here, but what I'm going to say is, if you don't give your all, you can't do it all. Period. So for today's video, as you can see by the title below, I will be talking about my coming out story and just coming out in general. Um, I wanted to do this video a very, very long time ago, but um, at the time, as I will get into in this video, there were certain things that I had to overcome and certain things that I had to accept, not only within myself, but just within what I was surrounded by, my relations to my family and everything but I'm here doing the video now so I'm going to start from the beginning for those of you that don't know I am a dancer I am a contemporary ballet modern tap lyrical jazz everything style you can think of every style you can think of I probably do this style basically when I was coming of age and just you know figuring out my passion and what I love to do um, I realized that I love to dance that was something that I truly admire, truly love to do, and as soon as I figured that out, I was like, hello, um, <laughs> let me get to dancing. So, in my elementary school days, it wasn't, I was the only male in my whole entire school that danced, like how I dance, like of course people like dancing might do a little cute little hit them folks from Atlanta, but not like really taking it seriously, like not like going to ballet class every day, like stuff like that and that's what I was doing in elementary school and a lot of people would just like you know call me gay and stuff and I didn't pers I personally did not know what that meant you know it was hard for me to just be labeled as something that I didn't know about like I didn't know anything about it I didn't know what being gay was I didn't know what it looked like what it sounded like so I had to do my research there was no one in my family that I could relate to there was no one that like I could talk to like about it that I felt comfortable talking about it like just like the word or just like the aesthetics or the culture of it in general like even if I wasn't like I had no one to educate me on it within my family so it was um different it was difficult interesting all of the descriptive words <laughs> but um yeah I took it upon myself to like educate myself on it and at the time I was in elementary school and um yeah like I had girlfriends um I, I had some pretty good girlfriends they were the ones that everybody was talking about honestly um I really only dated them because they were just a topic of conversation if I'm being honest with you guys my best friend at the time um I explained this in one of my other YouTube videos but I started dating people because the guys that I eventually liked were dating them. There was a point where I was starting to date girls because the guys that I liked dated them. So I just kind of dated them to like, you know, just be of status or to be, you know, up there with the rest of them. Like one of the boys everybody was talking about. But basically, um, I had a sleepover. I want to say it was about third, gr third, third grade. I want to say third. Yeah, definitely third grade. And I invited, you know, all boys over. And it wasn't that big of a deal. Like, a lot of boys, like, had just, like, you know, sleepovers with the guys and stuff. And I had a close friend at the time that wasn't a part of my immediate friend group that I called my brothers. I had this person that I called my best friend. He came over, and 
it was like we had like sleeping bags we were all in actually the same room that i have now because i still live in the same house but it was like i want to say three of us share the same bed and then some people slept on the floor but we were all like in elementary school we were all like had itty bitty bodies and yeah, like we shared the same bed, but it was different when that person got in the bed. It was like I felt a new type of energy. I, that's when I first knew that like I liked boys, but it, I, I really didn't explore it then. I just kind of knew like in my head, like, okay, this is something that is real. That's what happened in elementary school. Fast forward, we're going to middle school. So we're gonna start in sixth grade. Now this middle school happens to be an all boys middle school yeah in sixth grade i get there and you know it, I, it was a new environment um it was all boys and i did not have to loki i was relieved i didn't have to fit in to try and you know like girls like girls were stripped out of the factor i didn't have to do this or do that or date a girl or date anyone at all to try to fit in in middle school because people date people to fit in that's the reality of it really but um i was so excited i was like oh my god like i don't have to you know like put on this front like i don't have to try and like be something that i'm not and it wasn't even in the sense of that i even knew i was gay because i didn't but it was just in the sense of i don't have to dare or i don't have to try to like fit in like it's a new environment it's fresh it's new like some people from my old school came there but it was just fresh new like new environment new people blah 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 so i'm walking in sixth grade and i'm i'm like okay i'm gonna give them a new energy i was very much so that boy fast forward what happened in seventh grade year guys um i was introduced to my first ever situationship now i'm not saying this is my first relationship because to this day i have never been in a relationship but that situationship to this day is the closest thing that I've been to a relationship. It was very normal for straight hetero males to access. It's normal. It happens. And you know, we used to play this like winking game back in middle school in the seventh grade. This is where it started. And you know, like people would just wink at each other and then they would just like keep going and be like, oh like you gay, like da 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 and like laugh it off. But you know, I tried it and I like did it to you know fit in because at the same time, like you know, I had to fit into a sense. Like I didn't have to fit in like date girls and do all that extra stuff, but I had to fit in into a sense in order to like not you know everybody wants to fit in in a sense. Do I want to now? Absolutely not, because I'm comfortable with myself. But when people aren't comfortable with themselves, they want to fit in. Basically, did this winking game and we did it and you know we were winking and then there was a point where we you know did a little like like a little like. We were pretending like we were giving each other a kiss, and it just got to the extent where, like, I would just look at him, and, like, y'all know, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, when you look at somebody and you're just in awe, like, that's where it was getting to the point, too. So I remember him texting me, and he was like, What is this? And I was like, sure i don't know but i'm liking it like it was it was new it was fresh it was different and i actually felt something whoa thank you god i felt something we say that we're dating but we weren't really dating like we never even officially asked each other out we were just together basically we had a situation ship and it was great nobody really knew about it but it got to the point where it was going on for so long and that i liked it that i shared it with my best friend i was like girl like i'm talking to so and so and he was like, no, you're not. And I was like, girl, watch. When we go to recess, guess who he's going to ask to hold his jacket? Me. Guess who he's going to ask to hold his phone? Me. Guess who's he going to be looking at when he's playing the game? Me. So very much so, we went to recess and he was like, hey, Xavier, can you hold my jacket? And I was like... And I looked, and I was like, didn't I tell you? <laughs> we were, like, texting, and, like, we were sitting next to each other in class and, like, combining on projects. And when I did it, like, when I was like, oh, I'm going to come out with so-and-so on a project, he looked at me, and he was like, oh, so that's what you want to do? And I was like, no. <laughs> oh, my God, I cannot express to y'all how great it was. But, you know, that happened seventh grade year. And at this point, like... I know that like I like boys more than I like girls, but I'm still not admitting that I'm that I'm gay. I'm just enjoying what's happening. That's all I'm doing. I'm just enjoying what's happening. I'm having a good time. I'm having a little party. Now getting into the coming out aspect of my middle school years, that that was just me blabbering about, you know, my situationships and how I knew that I like boys more than girls, because I was surrounded by them. I had several situations with 
not several as in a lot, but like I've had situ enough situations to know that like I like boys more than I like girls. Me and my best friend at this time, like I've come out to him. People, most people at our school know that both of us, you know, like boys. We found like our own like little like D.O. Not so DL crew, like DL as in we never told people we were gay, but they kind of like made their own assumptions and thought we were, and kind of like that group. And we had our own little lunch table. It was like one, two, three, four, five. It was like six of us. Like we were definitely with us. But um, basically, we had our own little group at the lunch table, and you know we would just talk about like you know the little boys that we liked, and it was a cute little one too. It was a cute little one too. We talked about our, this thing called The List. So basically The List was a combination of all the boys that I liked. And on The List, we would call, we would play this game called Dibs. So every time the person would walk by, our dumb selves would literally be like, Dibs. D we, looking back on that, we were so dumb and it was so obvious. There was this person that I was like, out of all the people that we Dibs, this is the person that I would take seriously in a relationship. And that I would want. So one of the people in our in our group, he was in the high school like part of the school. We were still in middle school, and he was like, "Oh, I'm dating so and so." And I said, "We gon' we gon' call this person D." Hmm. So he was like, "I'm dating D," and I was like, "You're dating D." That doesn't even make any sense. Now D was like the athlete. Like he, I will never forget. Everybody in the school was talking about how he stopped playing basketball to sing. And even the coaches was mad and everything. And the people that go to my school know who I'm talking about. But basically, I was he was like, You're I'm dating D, da 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 da. And he was like, he showed me the messages, and I was like, Oh, this girl's serious. So basically what happened was, he tells me this. I find his Instagram, the, the D's Instagram, and I message him and I'm like, Oh, like, you know, like I didn't even know you were like that. Like I thought you were cute. So so I was just being honest, like, I didn't even know you were like that, I thought you were cute, da da da. And he was like, I thought you were cute too, and I'm like, Aren't you supposed to be dating? We're gonna call this boy M. Aren't you supposed to be dating M? And he was like, yeah. And then he was like, but I really want you though. And I was like, mm -mm, I'm not playing these games. I'm the best in the gang. So really, if you want me, then you're gonna have to dump him. Y'all, he dumped him the next day. Mind you, I'm in eighth grade. This boy is in 12th grade. And nobody can tell me I'm not that girl. Period. That happens, and you know, I'm on my good cahoots. I'm like, oh, I just got out of this situation ship, and I'm dating a 12th grader. <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, don't play with me. This kind of situation was heated. Like, we were on um, Instagram DMing each other back and forth, like, several heart paragraphs. Like, it was, it was deep. At the time, I... I just got like an Instagram. My parents allowed me to have an Instagram and they have my password. So you know back in the old days like it's, it was normal for you to get logged out of Instagram. So I got logged out of Instagram and I text my parents and I'm like hey like can I get the password so I can get back into Instagram. And they were like okay like we're not giving you the password. We'll just log you back in when we get when, I, when we pick you up before you go to dance. And I was like okay like whatever. And then I'm thinking in my head like dang I didn't even delete the messages or whatever. Hopefully they don't see them. Baby. Within five seconds, I got a message from my mother, and it was like, what is all this sh in your phone? Who is this person sending you hard eyes? And I was like, oh my god. Mind you, previous to this, like when I was doing my research on like, you know, like the gay culture and everything, like she found that in my phone in my history, even though like I might have deleted her stuff. And she was like, oh, like, are you gay? Like, or is this something you're looking at? I was like, no, like it's just a dare at school, like da 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 da, blah, 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 blah. And it just started to add up, basically. It started to add up. Like in elementary school, I was doing research on like culture and just gay stuff because I didn't even know what it was. And then in middle school, I was trying to figure out what exactly I was, like if I was bi or gay. So she put, like she caught me both of those times and caught me doing other things too. So it was just like, it's just adding up at this point. And this is going to be the moment. So, and it was like blankly there. Like he was saying, I love you. like. The, his, not only was his Instagram and what he looked like on, was on there, the messages from both of us was on there. I told him the next day I went to school, I was like, you need to delete everything. Like, instantly. And he did it. So that at the time where I'm admitting it, because my mother already seen it, like, I was there when she seen it, she saw it, like, it happened, she quoted stuff. 
of course I'm gonna admit it. She saw it. Basically, I had a meeting with my um, mother and father that day, that night, and I told them, they were like, who's this in your phone? I was like, I just, I didn't say anything because I was trying to figure out exactly what I was going to say, but I was like, this, that's my boyfriend. And the way I said it, it was kind of like, I was so tired of just like holding it down and holding it down. I was just like, that's my boyfriend. Like, I was just like, that's my boyfriend. And my father got up and he was like, what did you say? And I was like, that's my boyfriend. And I kid you not, he punched me all the way down the hallway. He didn't push me, he didn't shove me. He punched me down the hallway. So like, every time I would get up from being punched, I would get punched down again and all across the hallway. <sighs> to just finally admit it and to just have that reaction, it hurt me a lot, honestly, it did. From there, like the questioning, like the questioning was really like really bad like every time i got in the car like i would get questioned like oh like so do you want to be a transgender or like do you want to like get nails and i'm like no like that's not what being gay is like that's not that's not what it is there's so many different like shades colors and just different everything when it comes to the gay community every time i got in the car i knew it would be another question and i got tired i was so fed up with all these freaking questions i was done i was over i was like oh my god can we just forget it there was a point where every time i got in the car i would stop talking like i wouldn't say anything or i would go to sleep actually looking back on it every time i get in the car now i go to sleep it's just a force of habit like that shows you the reality of how bad it was it was hard for me to know that I didn't have like someone to relate to or to talk to about the situation outside of like my best friend who was there, but we still had different experiences and like trying to dance and be a competitive dancer on top of it, it was horrible. After I say this my eighth grade year, um, you know, I tell her that this is like real, like this is my boyfriend, this is blah, 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 this is what's happening. She threatens to go to the school and tell the principal and the dean of students that you know like what's going on at their school like do you know that this is what's happening at your leadership academy like you are attached to a christian school and you're letting all these things happen and da 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 i was just like are you really going to go to the school mind you i'm not a teacher's pet i'm a principal's pet like my seventh grade year i got valedictorian like i told you i was that boy like i was on my academics i was on everything like very much so because i was battling through so much stuff and i just kept wanting to prove to everybody that i was this boy even though I was that boy, but I constantly felt the need to always prove to someone that I was that boy. So that's why I got out of the train. I was always pushing hard for extra credit and I was always just extra and overly dramatic. But yeah, so I've worked my, my, I've worked my, I've worked my way up to being a principal's pet. Like the prince, me, the principal basically called me like his son at this point. She actually came up to the school and brought it to administration, brought it to the dean of students and the principal. And she was basically telling them everything that happened. And I was like, yeah, it happened. And they called the boy up there. And he's like, no, like, I don't know what he's talking about. That hurt me even more. To know that, like, this person is blatantly looking in my face and lying. Literally lying. Literally saying that this never happened, that I was, you know, obsessed with him. And he always seen me looking at him weird and all this other stuff. And I'm like, no, like why would i lie like i'm literally these people that i'm talking to literally are my father figures in the school why would i lie to them i'm already put on this pedestal every time i walk into this building because of the things that i've achieved and they look at me in this great like scene of eye why would i lie to them why would i want them to intentionally look at me differently that happens i look completely stupid in front of the dean of students and principal he took it upon himself to tell not only Everyone in the high school, but everyone in the middle and the high school knew what was going on. And to not only have, you know, the peers, my peers know, but to have administration know. Going to school was like horrible. I would go to school and like people would look at me differently. It was very, very hard. I didn't want to live. I didn't. I would cry myself to sleep. I didn't see the point in waking up and dealing with the same thing every day. 
it was hard to like go to dance like dance was a relief but at the same instance it wasn't because they would have a certain expectation and if I didn't fulfill that expectation I was considered like off like I wasn't on my game and there was no way for me to be on my game when I was going through all of this stuff I, I didn't want to live I did not want to wake up and deal with that I there were times where I would put my hands around my throat and just hold the pressure there to see what it felt like and see if I could do it but at the same time I would be crying because I'm like is this what life has come to I've always been confident and just so optimistic about the future and this is what it's come to me wrapping my hands around my neck and trying to choke myself me looking at depressing videos and trying to figure out ways to kill myself I actually wrote a suicide note and my parents found it and they asked me, is that how I felt? And I was like, oh no, like I just kind of like laughed it off. I was like, oh no, like this is not even, you know, real, like blah, 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 blah. But it was real. It was the truth. I don't think I understand like to know that my parents have already sacrificed so much allowing me to dance. They've sacrificed friendships. They've sacrificed relationships with family members. They've sacrificed so much. So there's not a lot they can latch onto. So for me actually admitting that I was the thing, everybody was like, oh, I mean like you can let him dance, but don't let him be gay. And then to like have a little hint of that, it was like, I felt in a sense that not only did they give up on me, like I gave up on myself. My mother would threaten that she would send me away to out of state and get myself fixed and for me to stop dancing that's what really did it for me honestly that's what really did it for me when the words came out of her mouth to say that i would stop dancing i literally wanted to end it all right there i didn't have an escape at school i didn't have an escape at home i didn't have an escape within family members my best friend kind of understood it but his understanding was like limited in a sense, but he still understood a lot. It was just so many other things piled up on top of it. But the thing that got me through it was my little brother. <laughs> the thing that got me through everything was my little brother. And if you are on my YouTube channel and you haven't seen Isaiah, then what are you doing? Isaiah was the only person that accepted me. I don't know, I think it was because he was so young, he didn't see, he wasn't polluted yet, like with what the world seeks is normal. And he was like, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, they don't, they don't accept you because you like boys? That's stupid. I cried. I'm surprised I'm not crying now, but um, he understood. And so I would come home and just talk to Isaiah about, you know, like, I don't know, maybe like the little boy that I've met and the little boy, I don't know, just like different things. Like, it wasn't even just about boys. It was just about like anything because I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone. And then there came the sense of my parents telling me that I'm going to influence my little brother to be gay. And that hit me even worse. I felt like I had to distance myself from my little brother because I didn't want whatever I had to rub off on him because I already have these pre-accusations that it's a disease like it's a phase and that it's wrong and that it was never meant to be and my camera died but um yeah I was like kind of like struggling with whether I was gonna like confide in him and everything or then like basically like keeping it to myself in a sense but it was that constant battle of do I tell him, do I not tell him because I don't want to influence or rub off or, you know, like have him go through what I went through because that's the last thing I want to happen. I actually want it to be better. And technically he had it better. Hmm. That, but that's another video. Yeah, so that happened my eighth grade year. The summer of my eighth grade year, getting ready to go into the school I'm in now. At this point, I knew I was gay like I knew that like I didn't like females at all in that way but I didn't really know how to say it or how to become public about it so basically what happened was I I knew within myself and I already had opened up the jar of uh, I had a boyfriend I was bi so I was like I mean I'm going this freshman year 
it's high school. It's a whole new experience, a whole new group of people, in a whole different environment, a whole different part of town. And I was like, I need to take advantage of this. I need to go in like free, like, you know, just free. Basically, after my middle school years, I was like, okay, I've been in this situation. I don't want to be stuck in the closet anymore because I didn't have the opportunity to express and show publicly like who I liked, why I liked them. And, you know, pop out like, you know, what normal people do. So I was like, in high school, if I get the opportunity, I want to like go full fledged. Like I want everyone to know, like I want, you know, to be public, not everyone to know, like be my business, but just it to be known and have that sense of like, you know, this is me, this is who I am and period. But um, yeah, I had that uh, epiphany and I knew that I needed to, number one, tell my family so that it was, there weren't any surprises. When it came to homecoming and, you know, prom and everything, there wouldn't be like any questions asked. It would just be given, like it would be already told them. It was already a situation when friends, well not when friends came over, but when I would have like friend groups, like they would already understand it wouldn't be like, you know, any confusion, any, you know, differences. I wanna say a few weeks before I started my freshman year, I just came back from, you know, traveling from across the freaking country for dance this summer. And I was like, I need to talk to you guys. And I'm pretty sure they already knew like what was gonna happen because even like, at this time, my mother and my father and my aunt, those were the people that I told, the people in my immediate household. But, um, you know, I gathered them together and I was basically like, I'm gay. That's what this is. It took me a long time to say it. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. It probably took me 20 minutes to just get the thought through my head that I was about to say this. And a lot of people don't realize, like, it's very hard to say those two words. It's kind of scary. Like, it was very scary. And it took me a while to say it. Everyone cried. I cried. My father cried. My mother cried. My aunt cried. Um, to sum it up, basically, my father walked out of the room and we went into, you know, the my parents' room and we talked about it. It wasn't as, like, physical as the first situation because they were kind of already introduced to the fact that I liked boys. It was just the final kind of step of letting them know that that's what it is. Like, that's just it. Like, I just like boys. Like, that's just what it is. And it was hard for them to take. I mean, I do understand because there's no one in my family like myself growing up, like from their separate, you know, childhoods and then mine, there was no one to like really talk to about these things. There was no one to really look at as far as advice or an example of the different like cultures when it comes to gay culture. And it was a hard pill, not for them to swallow, but just for the whole family to swallow in general. I remember there were still some questions asked because, you know, it was new and different for the family. I officially said that I was gay. At the time, it was very like frustrating. It was very like annoying, but like looking back on it, like they just weren't educated and I wasn't educated at the time. So it was it was a lack of communication, frustration. Um, and I did have the ultimatum that uh, I couldn't go to prom or homecoming with a boy. I had to be with a girl. But now like it's a lot better. Um, me and my mom talk about boys all the time. <laughs> all the time. I talked to my dad about a boy. I talked to, to my dad about one boy because he happened to be from New York. And my dad is from New York. And so I was like, do all the people in New York do this? Because I don't like this. I don't like it. My little brother, me and my little brother talk a lot. But since being out and about, it's been great, honestly. I've come, it was a huge relief. It was huge. Oh my God. Ugh. It was a great relief. I didn't feel like I was carrying anything. I didn't feel like I had to try to be like anybody else. Yeah. And now it's just like, you know, will I ever get a relationship? I don't know about that, y'all. We're gonna have to see because sometimes these people be playing games and that's a whole nother video. Why I'm single, that's a whole nother video. If y'all wanna see that, drop it down in the comments, but <laughs> neither here nor there. But back to the topic. Like elementary was more of figuring out like what it actually is because I had no idea what it was. I knew it was normal in the dance community, but I didn't know exactly what that meant. Um, I knew that I liked a boy, but I didn't know what it meant. Like I knew nothing about the sort. Middle school was kind of educating myself and like, you know, seeing other people's experiences, like my best friend's experience at the time and, you know, kind of learning from that. 
and also figuring out myself because going to an all-boys school does that to you. You figure out what you like, what you don't like, how high your standards are, and how not high they are. <laughs> and then high school, it's really just kind of been being comfortable with myself and knowing my standards and knowing my worth. That's kind of been what my high school years are. I am a senior in high school now. I'm getting ready to be 18. And, you know, I just feel like it was needed that I needed to do this video. I needed you guys to understand. I've never actually talked about, you know, being gay on my YouTube channel. It's always been something that I've held back from because I didn't do a video like this to explain the story. So y'all wouldn't even understand, like, where to begin. If I would have done this video a lot earlier, the intentions probably would have been a little different. I probably just would have just wanted to let you guys know, like, what I was going through or trying to make my parents seem like they were bad, but I want to do this video to, like, inspire and let you guys know, like, the intention behind what I do is because there was an opportunity, there was a moment in time where I didn't have the opportunity to do this or I didn't think I would be here. Yes, I've been on The Vampire Diaries. Yes, I've been on So You Think You Dance The Next Generation. Yes, I've been on Dance Moms. Yes, I have been in three different dance magazines. Yes, I've been crowned top 10 male best dancer two times in a row at the Dance Awards. Yes, I have got valedictorian in my seventh grade a year while being a competitive dancer. I have several regional titles, several national titles. Yes, I am in the top 30 of my senior class right now. And I am one of the seven people that are black and I am the only black male and I am the only person of the LGBTQ plus community in the top 30. Yes. <laughs> All of these great things have happened. Yes, I've gotten over $300,000 worth of college scholarship money in the beginning of my senior year. But the intention and the push and the drive and the passion behind getting those things would have not happened if I did not experience what I experienced. So this video is to inspire a lot of people that are probably going through something similar that I was going through and to let them know that they can do it. Let them know that there is a light to the other side. Basically, that's all for this video. If you want to see another video like this, like I was thinking maybe, you know, either bringing my mother on here to talk about how she feels or my father or my brother. Yeah, if you want to see more videos like this or you have any, you know, suggestions regarding this YouTube channel and where it's going to go because I'm super excited. I told you guys I had a lot, a lot of surprises for you guys. And, you know, we're just opening up. We're growing. It's senior year. Ah! But, um, yes. Thank you guys for watching this long video because I know it's long. I know it's probably the juiciest story time you done ever heard in your life. But thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and share this video to all of your friends and family in order for you to be part of the Xavier family. This is Xavier doing Xavier things for the Xavier fam, and you guys already know what I'm about to say. If you don't give your all, you can't do it all. Period. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Xavier Logan. Make sure you follow me on Snapchat at Those Facials, and make sure you follow me on Facebook and you now at Xavier Logan. Bye, Zaysters.